folks, how are we going? We're back here in the veggie garden again, looking at the raised beds, just uh, going up to the next part of our little process in developing our raised beds and growing all the wonderful produce we want. I've had a few emails come through from the previous episodes asking about how do you fix an existing garden bed, be it all raised or in the ground, when it's hydrophobic, the soil's really hydrophobic. There's no two ways or one way in fixing that other than really analysing it, digging some of the garden bed up and uh, working in the moisture. So come along with me here, I'll show you that one there. Oh, before we go, this is the one I did the other day and I came back out already. I didn't wait a week. Don't have to wait a week. You can plant it almost immediately. That's what I've done in the past, but sometimes it's good to let it rest if you want to and you're not ready to plant it. It's not gonna hurt it one, one iota. Here you'll see lettuce, I've got beetroot, I've got a cabbage in that corner. And you can see already, um, well they're doing okay, but have a look at the broccoli. These are now three years old at least, these broccoli plants. I've had them from the gardens and I'd never replanted this area. So they're coming up again, that's trying to flower, but we've got some little baby broccoli heads going on there. And I dare say if we maintain these, this will continue producing, but we'll be getting little broccolettis or broccolinis growing on it. So this, these will eventually become really big plants. So a little bit of everything going on here. This one here we top dress with one bag of planting mix, but let's go to the other one that hasn't had anything. And there are existing plants going on in here as well. Now. This bed here, again, the same process as before. We've got straw, compost, mulch on top, uh, planting mix on top, but we still have a couple of chili plants that, be it all, they're struggling a little bit because of neglect, um, but we can nurse these back to good health and keep them ongoing. The zucchini plant's on its last legs, but let's have a look at this soil in between. Now, I think I may have sprinkled some water on it. Yeah, I think I did. This is going back a while, but you can see it's moist there. Carrots still popping up out of nowhere. Let's just get underneath it. And right down underneath, if I grab it, it's dry, right? Well, it, there's a little bit of moisture in it, but it's, it's not bone dry, but it's you know closer to dry than it is wet. And the top section, only about an inch or so, about this much, has actually got that moisture in it. So for this to hydrate, in all respect, you can top dress it with compost or I recommend our planting mix which has the cocoa in it and cocoa is an excellent medium to retain moisture when it's covered up and it's not exposed to the sunlight. What is cocoa? It is made from coconut husk and it's been grated down and pulverized so that it becomes a nice little pulpy sort of medium where you can see it holds moisture. It actually doesn't form really well because it's very porous. So once you hydrate it, it will retain its moisture quite well. The thing about cocoa is it's not a great mulch to be laid on top of a garden bed or even pots, especially out in the full sun. They'll be good in the shade, so shade-loving plants, indoor plants. There are a lot of growers who use cocoa to grow their indoor plants and shade-loving plants as well. And it's a great plant medium to grow in because it, it's able to retain the moisture and release it quite quickly and available uh, for all the plants. But the problem is once it dries out, it's almost impossible to hydrate unless you soak it in a barrow filled with water. And that's the way you get those dry blocks, you know those really dehydrated compressed cocoa blocks? Well, that's what they do with those. They dehydrate them, then you've got to soak them in a bucket and it will hydrate, but by adding just water over with a watering can, most times it will run through and there's, it doesn't sit around long enough for the moisture to actually penetrate into it. So to rehydrate, it's a long process. So to avoid that happening, what you need to do with these sort of garden beds, yes, sprinkle it on top, but and it's not about digging the garden bed over, but rather creating air pockets in it like this. So punch your garden fork. This is one without a handle, obviously. Just punch holes into it rather than lifting it up and turning the soil over. You can, if you like, crack it open. And what I mean by cracking it open is doing this like that and like that. See how I've just moved it, but I haven't dislodged the entire mix or handful of soil that I've got here. So if you didn't see it properly, this is what I've done. I've put my garden fork in. You can put it as far down. You can see it's nice and soft, but then just wiggle it backwards and forwards like that and like that. Now what you're doing there is creating air pockets. So when you go to water this bed here, it will soak straight through to the bottom. If I don't do that and I've got a hard surface like this, You've seen it in the past and I'm sure if you've got one of those beds, you add water, it pulls up and it sometimes runs out down the sides or if it's a mound, it will run off into the residing garden beds or lawn areas. You don't want that happening. You need to get a garden fork, not like this, obviously with a handle on it, and just 
punch holes. Wiggle it forward and back and go around and do that everywhere. See here, it's, it's really hard here. Cracked, now see how I just cracked it open? See how I wiggled it? I haven't turned it over. I'm not disturbing the entire bed, but enough to get water to get inside there. And you don't have to do it everywhere because it'll go in here, it'll soak in there, stop at the base of it, and then start to absorb through the walls. Now you can do it every, you, know, you can do it as much as you like, but it doesn't have to be completely covered in holes everywhere. Just start slowly, see how it penetrates, and then you'll see it'll hydrate itself. Now, if you want to add something to your garden bed, you can use the cocoa for porosity and moisture retention, but again, don't leave it on top. Blend it through, in this case you may need to scratch it through the surface and only scratch about this deep there, that's all you need to do. But then on top of the cocoa, so if you've done all this like that, scratched it through nicely like that, see how it's, it actually blends beautifully and creates that better texture and moisture retention that you want it to have or absorption. So once you've done that, that's a nice blend like that, not a flat layer of cocoa but blend it into the existing bed, then add some more compost or co um, planting mix on top. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to use the cocoa, make sure you cover it with mulch. Real simple, crack holes open, top dress it with uh, cocoa, scratch it in, blend it into the existing bed, then to feed it, use the planting mix which has everything in it, and then put your straw on top. Now the other question I received was, what do you do with the liquid mixture that you've made to soak your bark in or your straw in, and once the straw's all been used in the garden, you're left over with all this wonderful liquid here. And I say wonderful, that's because it is wonderful. It's full of the wonderful nutrients that you're getting from our Eco Butch and Liquid Gold. And this is activated mulch. This is what you want to be doing in your garden, folks. Now, what do you do with this liquid? Well, you can get yourself a scoop, scoop it up and water it into your garden, folks. That's what you can do. Now, you don't have to dilute it down any further because you should be adding the right amount of uh, solution into this or making the right amount of mixture. So if you don't know how many litres your bin is or your wheelbarrow or your trolley is, whatever you're using to, to hold the liquid in, get yourself the watering can. You must have a watering can, a nine litre watering can or whatever size it is, and count how many litres of water you fill in to the uh, wheelbarrow or in this case this uh, little trolley. It takes how many litres and then you can work out how many mils of each solution you'll need to put in there. Quite simply, you can work on around 10 to 20 mils per nine litres of water. So 10 mils or 20 mils if you like, up to that, no more than that, of Eco Butch and Liquid Gold in this uh, barrow here. So this is holding about 120 litres. And I can't remember, do the sums on that, how many mils that is. That's 120 litres divided by 10, that's 12 times 20 mil, that's 240 mil of each solution. Or you can halve that and do about 120 to 150 mil of each solution. And that way, even though it looks nice and dark and murky, it's still at the right mixture rate to not burn your plants and cause any harm. So you can either water it back into your garden, like this, or otherwise, you can basically reuse it by adding more mulch into it and soaking it. So you can do this a number of times, and obviously the mulch will take up some of the moisture, and slowly, slowly it will deplete. So do the more mulching if you need to, because if you've got lots of garden beds like I have, or time it so that when you do this, you can actually use the remaining liquid here to feed the remaining parts of your garden, or your entire garden bed, in fact. So mulch your garden bed and then feed it with this on top. It's a double whammy, and everybody wins, especially your plants. Check out our website, Vasili's Garden. Dot com. Click and collect folks for Thebiton, get your orders in, take advantage of the great specials, the buy one get one free, it ends by the weekend. So for those who want to trial our products, you get a bonus uh, Vasili's product with every one you order there. And select click and collect for Thebiton, or obviously Dandenong North and Lethbridge where we are. Or support your local garden centres with everything they've got there and keep it natural, keep it clean, keep it real. It's Vasili'sGarden.com from me Vasili, Maresi. Yeah.